Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, we're ready to start. We're, we're, we're waiting for, for one trustee who will join us in just a few minutes, but we're going to get started in the meantime. This is a, a call to order. This is the October 17, 2023 open public meeting of the Needham Library Board of Trustees being held via hybrid format, allowing remote attendance. Uh, roll call. Uh, I'll take a roll call to confirm that trustees, library staff, and persons anticipated to be on the agenda uh, are present and can hear me. Uh, for the trustees, uh, Anna Geraldo Kerr is a few minutes late, so she's not here yet. Uh, Rob Kedit. Here. Kay Cahill. Here. Earhart Grace. Here. Michael O'Neill. Here. Megan Small. Here. And me, Jay Fialka, if I'm here. Uh, library staff, acting director, Dimitri Kiriakis, uh, technology specialist, uh, Danielle Tawa. Uh, Jen, what's your title? I'm sorry. Administrative I need to, special. I need to get you on, on the program here. Uh, and how do you, last name? White. Jen White, Jen White uh, administrative specialist, program specialist, Gay Ellen Bennett. Here, uh, I'll say here for her. Uh, <laughs> Recording Secretary Faith Crisley. I'm here. Very good. Katie. Uh, and yes, of course, I wasn't going to forget Katie. I'm just okay. <laughs> moving to the next. They waited for me, to, for me to make the same mistake I made Sorry. last month. I wasn't going to do that. Uh, and we have Katie King, uh, Deputy Town Manager, here, to, here today as well. Uh, no one from the Library Foundation, I don't think, is here. No, uh, Beth Emerson could not make it tonight. Okay. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. If there's a problem that prevents the completion of this meeting, we will reconvene at 7 o'clock p.m. November 21st, 2023. Let's remind ourselves that that's a different day than the one that was originally scheduled. So it should be on your calendar for November 21st. Um, and call to order. I hereby call this meeting of the Needham Board of Library Trustees to order at 7.04 p.m. We'll start with public comments. Are there any representatives of the public, uh, either in person? We're just getting started. And, uh, can I retroactively do the attendance that includes uh, Anna being present? Please don't mark me late. Everybody knows that. Uh, <laughs> again, it, uh, in, in person or remote, any members of the public who, who has any comments for us? OK. Um, Minutes, I'd like to request the motion to approve the minutes of the September 13th, 2023 meeting. Uh, after that motion, then we can discuss if anybody uh, has any comments. Anybody make such a so motion? Moved. Earhart, thank you. Second. Michael, thank you. Uh, any comments concerning the the minutes? Little or small, Earhart? I found one uh, typo. Yeah. Um, at the beginning of the director's report appendix on page nine, uh, it looks like director's report got deleted except for the T at the end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Sorry about that. <laughs> so just My bring name. director's report back. <laughs> Anyone else with any comments? Uh, in the old business, it has a, a schedule for the director search. I guess the schedule has changed since, since those minutes. Is that why that schedule is outdated? I think it's a little bit outdated, but it could be because the schedule changed since the, the date of the minute. What page are you on, Jen? I'm sorry, page six. Like old business, there. Are... No, we... I, I think as long as we uh, clarify what the current schedule is during our meeting okay. discussion today, fine. that would be fine. I like that. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? Okay. Well, I. So do we need to have a, a vote to approve the minutes, or? Okay. Uh, we already have the motion, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'll go around. Uh, to say, uh, I don't think you have to do roll call. You don't have to do roll call. Oh, yeah, we're all here. Okay. okay. So just uh, all, all in favor say aye. Yeah. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed say no. It is passed. Uh, and now I suppose uh, I'm going to defer to Dimitri 
Uh, next on the agenda is the director's report, yep. and we'll take it from there. Thanks. Okay. Um, so, some general highlights. Our staff training again, September 22nd, includes some field trips to the Framingham Public Library, the New York Library, and the Norfolk Law Library, as well as the Department of the Afternoon. Everybody loves seeing our libraries in action. They were really great. They hosted us, their staff loved it. Uh, they got quite a bit out of that. And uh, they went right back. Any especially interesting lessons learned from visiting? Well, the there might have been a couple. You know, I mean, it's, you know, I, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything specific where somebody said, "Yeah, we'll do that." But you know, um, Birmingham is a much larger library. It's, it's the city, ninety thousand, and have a large staff. Yeah. I mean, I think they had uh, our staff was really more impressive. Like, I think eight people fell sick that day, yet they still had enough people to staff. Like, wow. Oh my God. Um, well, and what she said was unusual, but. Um, um, you know, they're a large unionized libraries. And they had coffee and donuts for them, which is good. They were still <laughs> really good. Reason. Our staff loved it. <laughs> yep. um, but yeah, that was, that was, that was, they said, wow, we keep it on one day. Yeah. <laughs> that and the coffee and donuts. That would, that would be all of us here. That's one thing I'm So, um, okay. The whole reference part has been really welcoming, and the library has been to Allison Smith, our new head of reference. She's been uh, doing really well, and uh, she's happy. She's come back every day. <laughs> um, so, uh, and they've been very good to be sharing their knowledge to learn about all the things that have been going on now. She's getting speed activated pretty quickly with the way we do these things. Yeah. Robin Quinn's last day was September 27th. She was really diligent about documenting the current meetings and all the workload. So that's that's going to be really useful for the next person to come to the definition and also for the reference staff to be able to continue the problems and for now. Thank you to Robin for all her hard work. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I missed Robin. Um, let's see. So you'll see later on during that. We talked about this today. We're going to ask the adjustment to what we can use something for. There are a couple of things that are really great ideas that um, Allison has that we're going to implement. One is a software where you, I think we can use the trial version for now, but it's called Gimlet uh, to report reference test transactions. Each reference, it can give very specific data set for considering things like patterns of high volume during a certain times of the day, questions that we indicated needs of double signage, and other popular services. Um, uh, the medium harvester, I know Anna will talk about this later, but uh, the library was well worth it right now. Sunday, October 1st, the medium diversity initiative with Anna and by the library staff to share a table with them. Start working by bringing a part time reference library in New York. Joined Anna in NDI, and I'm sure she did a great job engaging the public and community members. And uh, you can see a couple of pictures there. Uh, one is with Tom, and the other folks are okay. Too, so, uh, Okay. Um, Newman Elementary School is awarded the Children's Summer Reading Program trophy with 15.7 hours to register here. Um, we used, as you know, we used the temps earlier this year in the summer, and the folks that we had from the temps did such a great job in helping children in our reference departments. We're really grateful for that. Our staff would request that we took it. They were great. I wish we could keep them, but you know, we'd be here for a little while. Um, no one can send out to each elementary school teacher in the new and public schools often tours of the library and library visits, story time book talks, the STEM programs in their classrooms, and film books on specific topics for their classrooms. And teachers have responded positively, I use it, but responded to requests that they are uh, very interested in that. Uh, as you may have noticed before, I've got a, we've got a picture of it here. Aaron Basketball did Put those three in magnets explain why they brought it to my history so you folks fill those out. I can't read them, but you can <laughs> read them there. Um, actually, I will send out Paula to collect all the info from that. So if you get a chance to copy it tonight, I can share that with you. Um, Paula did coordinate a literacy specialist off of meeting tutoring twice a month, excuse me, at the library. Uh, sessions started on October 12th, and upcoming sessions are scheduled for November or October 17th, November 2nd, and November 23rd. Um, there are some days have been scheduled in December, and sessions will continue to the rest of the school year. And it's funded by the reluctant readers grant from the LFM. 
we can really work with that. Um, Paul is also working to provide library cards for the children in the after school program in Cook's Bridge, which housing development. He also offered to do outreach for them to them at their location and do some very good stuff with them. Um, performers for the children's programs during the winter, spring of 2022 and 2024 have been already booked. Uh, library will be participating in the table along with them during the school football. And uh, <laughs> again, we'll see the costumes, maybe we'll get some photos in the next direction of the course. We'll see. Um, I just want to highlight one of our part time representatives, Tina Favre, in the children's room, created a QR code shelf boxes for patients who are using to find new event books that are similar to what they read. So while browsing their shelves and they see the series, they can scan the QR code and you can see the pictures right on the shelf that are new books. And it will give them, uh, it will give them, uh, a, a tag books in our catalog that are similar and they could either, uh, they can find books on the shelves and fix the whole from their device while they're doing it, which is a great idea. Um, is that something? Is there some sort of program that is already pre programmed to know which books are similar to the um, Yeah, I, I forget how, but like, there's a way of doing that. We could use that with you all to love it to find those. So, um, but yeah, kudos to Gina for, uh, you know, putting it in that. It's a great initiative. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, also, Allison Smith, I mentioned before, is the newly appointed co chair of the Minuteman Library Network EBI Interest Group for the 23 24 season. So, we're really happy about that. Mm -hmm. um, Danielle's upgraded a couple of devices in the eleven. She met with LCN. LCN is the company that does our wireless, right? No. To upgrade cabling in the library wireless access points. Um, Danielle's assisting me with. Anything I don't have to come to. We really turn it. When I call her and say, Can I talk to you? She's sure. Like, no, it's, it's all right. It's not going to be done. I really appreciate it. It's a good job. And as an example, she's been uh, doing the interview with the Kevin Lovett for a part time sort of positions. So, and, uh, if I did say it, I really appreciate it. <laughs> Um, let's see. The MBLC Ars Financial Report was submitted on October 6th. There's a lot of help from Jenna. I really appreciate that from Jenna. Thank you very much. And uh, the MBLC requires this provider to be eligible for this study. And I see I mentioned there, and Jenna and Katie are both on the capital budget, not really by budget submissions. And that's on board. Uh, okay, just a little bit about personnel. Uh, today, it says here, Tamara Dalton will begin her role as Secretary of Services Supervisor on October 17th, which is today. She started this morning, met her at 9 o'clock, Jenna and I did. We onboarded her, we spent some time with her. She didn't get scared, she stayed after that. <laughs> <laughs> we hope she comes back tomorrow. Oh, I, 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 I checked her at 5.30, she's coming back. <laughs> Great. Um, we spent some time with one of the remaining tech services um, staff and it was very many First time we see a smile in a long time. Okay. Well, I should say that the last time we saw a smile was we had a uh, room uh, meet and greet with Tamara. And Tamara, her mom's from the Netherlands, so she went to the Netherlands um, just before uh, she started dropping to visit family. So, so she's really great to see setting times to talk to them. So that's great. And by the way, she had strep throat. What else? She had, she had all sorts of medical things that were four or five weeks before she, she seemed healthy today. She's good. She's good. <laughs> I think you all need extra nice coffee delivery since you love your coffee. Coffee. I don't need much coffee. Right now. <laughs> um, okay. Moving on. Uh, you mentioned about Robin. She left her. She left her role here, and September third started her role as director supervisor of the role with public library. She also lives in Wolverine, Rhode Island. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a six-minute commute. Oh, well, I think she got an upgrade, but she just. Moved. And she used to take her an hour and a half each break. So we we're going to have to And we will miss her. Yeah. The uh, position is posted internally to make sure that on October 12th, we'll close this tomorrow. Um, and we'll take a look at see what internal candidates we have to go through that. The interviews for the part time cert and circulation positions concluded on Friday. And uh, and, you know, it's been, we've been working on you know, to identify 
uh, and that was identified by those candidates that we really like and uh, we were making offers and we were able to say yes. Um, as you know, the other thing is the director position, talk about that later, as a part time position in tech services, a part time solution librarian, and a position. And I'm going to my to all of them. That was good. Yeah. You want to do that first, or do I go to the next one? You can just do it now, and then forget it. Huh? You can do it now, so you don't forget it. Yeah, we can do it now, so you don't forget it. Okay. You want to go to the next one? We can accept all of the ones. Pardon? We can accept all of the ones. As written? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Does somebody yeah. want to make a motion? So we Thank you, Rob. Second. Anna, second. second. Uh, to appro approve the guest list, uh, the gift list. I'm going to go around. <laughs> New more exclusive. Uh, Anna Geraldo Kerr. Oh, we can do it by affirmation. <laughs> Everybody in favor of that, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No? Motion is passed. Okay. A couple of things from the Lindsay Browns. Um, to bring up the date. If you notice that the uh, circulation does, so the day we had our staff, our development day, the town carpenters came and they now we post to drop off things in the library. Before, if you recall, people had to do it outside or we take it from them at whatever public service desk they were at. Now they, they did a really nice job. It's not hard on the staff that you put out. It doesn't, they, they were very thoughtful about how they set it up. So, um, so yeah, they did a nice job and it's working really well. And you have patrons on that. On that. that is nice to come in and do that. So um, let's see. I don't know. You can see the other stuff about the fire extinguisher, the long irrigation. But what I did want to point out, my items pending, the main elevator is working. Oh, oh. Those guys, Kevin and John, they've been so many times, I know their name. I can tell them every time they're up there. So um, they put chairs in the elevator. I was like, what are you doing with those? They go, well, they had their whole setup where they were testing all the different things they could fail. Actually, it's kind of funny because a couple of times I heard them, no, that failed. They go, but you're still there. They go, no, we're good, don't worry. <laughs> so, but they signed off on it today. Okay. I've taken the elevator three times, put myself on it three times. <laughs> What's this fine thing? Yeah, you did too, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's working. And we're hoping. Is a lot of That's right. Um, maintenance is working on the masonry work along the sidewalk. So some of the alarms are fixed, the ones that were pending it took a long time. It's it's always just off some of us because we're going to open the door and the alarm goes off, so we have to put it in place. So they fix them. Um on the second floor, we're waiting for on a close to finish work on the inside door button on the first floor and adding on the inside door on the third floor. Uh, we own our plumbing, so we support the place of water was really going to be fine. Angel replacing some ceiling panels that are running around the right building. The second floor got a whole lot of service, but they're, they're working on that. And uh, and that last one did not fly. I mean, the seat there is an empty. We accommodate those grass. Okay, so can you finish the reports? The building looks really nice. With that, the building looks really nice. He keeps it through. He does a very good job. Please thank him. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Any questions on the uh, financial reports? No. No. no? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Statistical report. It's a general observation. New. We saw a rise in number of people in person the library compared to last year, which is great. It seems to be increasing month by month. Although library service is slightly down from August 2022, August 2023, it is understandable for the people who are coming back with the many other pursuits and all sorts of other things. Study room usage is significantly increased compared to the same period in 2022. <clears throat> and additionally, you know, popularity of all the downloads of books, audio, and video remains consistent, and it's a lot higher than last year. And that's been the trend throughout the last few months. Now, we do have one on new business. Uh, I heard you make a reference to um, a couple of things that uh, Allison's initiative. We're asking 
Um, we're going to ask you to vote to allocate 1547 state budget to the expenditures for the quick expenditures are this uh, software program called Gimlet, which is a reference question tracking software that staff reference children's circulation. So they're using their reference, and once we get it in place, we'll go well out the circulation in children's. And, uh, um, well, while we do that, I'll think about it. Um, but, but, um, the current annual cost is $348. The other software we'd like to get is Lib Staffer. Now, that is one that Allison worked with when she was in Belmont. It's specifically, uh, as opposed to the program like when did work, the other one is specifically designed for libraries. So, you know, her experience has worked very well mm -hmm. in Belmont. Um, so uh, staff schedule it could be used by all departments to identify schedule processes, it's highly functional, it allows staff to access their schedules from anywhere. The system department has been tracking our own switching on our part time staff if they go over the mm -hmm. if they don't go over the 19 hours for the uh, budget report, uh, reporting requests and building closures. Um, I'm going mean, to basically through the whole lot of those things and automate schedule rotation. It will allow them to access schedules from anywhere and integrate with online calendars. And the current cost of that is $11.99 a year. So we didn't use all of our early attempts and funding, so we think there's some space to do it. Yeah. So that is something that you'd like to vote on. So we need now then a, a motion to vote to, to allocate that money. Uh, so moved. Okay, thank you. Second. Second. Thank you, Anna. Her heart looked like that. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. 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 So, so I think it's a great idea. I'm mean, just to understand a little better. So, are you creating a database of questions, and that then you can access as needed? No, no, no. it's not. It's just instead of doing tick marks on a little piece of paper, it's yeah. tell the whole story. This is telling the whole story of what we're doing on our day. So, for example, so you're doing a daily. It does assessment. Really? It's multiple people. We don't know who does what. But it collects the data in a it way. All the data which you so, so, so when we pull up like reports, we can see like do we need extra signing somewhere? Like uh, so, so you, you can follow trends after a while. Yeah. So if there's a spike, for example, with people requesting certain type of material or hotspot or something in particular, you say, oh, look at that trend, you know, and something may attend. So every every week or every month, you're really can hard to, to collect that as we just do pick marks, you know. Mm -hmm. That what we used to just say we have a question, we have a directional question, we need to assess it. That was what we were questioning. So we used to just select it more um, verbose uh, language, so to speak, and allow us to decide how many people we actually need on reference that's going to be given time. Mm -hmm. so Is there a way to show us an example of what the data as it's collected with the card? Um, I'm just starting. Okay. Mm -hmm. When they do the tick marks, it used to look like they were in, they were locked up somewhere because you go there and you would ask a question, you see them after they finish it. It's going to be hard in three weeks. It's much harder. I'll come in first uh, to say I think this is fabulous proposal. Like I think purpose built software makes a lot of sense and it's going to make it easier for both this. Um, this 
the, the data reporting as well as um, it sounds like the, the scheduling um, uh, will be greatly improved in terms of the so I'm for that. I won't, I wanted to ask about what the motion is. We said so brief, but oh. I wasn't actually clear what we're asking yeah. to be. Well, I, I heard it was the motion. Here. To, uh, a vote to, we can redo that if you like because and I remember who who moved the I, second. I can read the motion. I can but, say it okay, yeah. more fully. Yeah, I mean, it was it was well, because okay. because there's there is a proposal in the new business language here that says that we um that we that we reallocate okay. from the bibliotemps in, encumbrance uh, in order to provide for these annual costs. I see. Um versus just well, out of the state aid more broadly encumbering it. Um, and I was, I want to make sure we have clarity on that. So which is you it want we want to do? About it, Kay? <laughs> we want to reallocate, is that the language we want? Um, is that what we feel is correct? So that's, yeah, that's what I want to know. Is that, is that the a firm proposal that's the best way to do this? Or well, do we... so we, we figured the best way to fund it is to take some of the money from the building terms of Congress. If that, I don't know if that means a motion or a vote. Um, right now, there's not enough unencumbered funds in state aid to cover the amount that we're asking right. for. So it would have to come from somewhere. Um, I believe that we're done with mm -hmm. our bibliotemps. Yeah. 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 So we're 100 percent done with that. We can close that. It can be two separate things, or it can be a. It, it, it sounds like there's a motion to to lower the the bibliotech encumbrance in order to allow us to allocate. $1,547 of the state aid budget for these expenditures. So you have to have the exact amount of, thing of what you I think he, he just stated that, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So okay. basically, the motion would be okay. right to to reallocate um, uh, state aid, uh, right, previously approved state aid funding um, to cover uh, two uh, software programs, Gimlet. And uh, the second one was yeah. yeah. um, uh, for uh, a total of $1,547. Is that correct? Yeah. Is that? <laughs> and Anna, you want to yeah. re second? <laughs> second. <laughs> and uh, oh, anything else, <laughs> Gerhard? <laughs> I, um, I just want to make sure I understand the numbers. Um, so, our bibliotech attempt coverage, um, as it's currently encumbered, uh, is eight thousand one hundred twenty dollars and twenty two cents? Um, is that then um, minus the nine hundred four dollars and forty cents that we've spent, um, or is what is the balance on that encumbrance? That is the balance. That is the balance. Okay, great. All right, that's what I wanted clarification on. I wasn't sure if that was the encumbered total or if that was the balance. And you do now. Yeah. So I just have one comment. Of course. Okay. So I just wanted to say that I think that this falls into we have a policy on uh, the, the trustees policy on state aid use, and I think this falls well within our policy of new pilots seed money and innovations. So this is a good use of state aid. That's, That's what you Yep. Which <laughs> one? <laughs> All those in support of the motion, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The motion is passed unanimously. Can I just make one question just because the question I asked you a couple of days ago, but others of you might be curious as well because I come to the library sort of every weekend and I first thing I do is I walk through the new books. Uh, and if you do that, you'll notice that instead of what is ordinarily four four rows of new books, uh, for now there's there's only pretty much one one row. There's a shortage of new books, and I'd like Dimitri to explain that so that we can all understand that. Uh, because anyone who uses the library regularly might might question what's going on about that. So, as you know, we have several positions that are now. The tech services department out of it. The four is down with one person, mm -hmm. and she's been real, and she's been doing a great job. But it's a lot for one person, so we can't turn out the material as, as quickly as we used to. Once we get back up to full staffing, today we sent tech services supervisor start. Uh, 
we have another, we're, we're, we're going to look at filling that open position. There is a person who's out on, on leave who should be coming back soon. And I would anticipate by Thanksgiving, we'll be back up to four people and that's probably, and that will, we'll be able to get back to our usual level of processing. On the other side of that as well, um, I, for example, normally order the nonfiction print books. I've not had an opportunity to do that. Allison has ordered that. Allison has ordered the chunk. Allison is great. I know she's saying it, but she's done a lot of the ordering. Uh, so we're trying to catch up. Mm -hmm. But again, that's one person ordering three different, you know. So in total, as we catch up on our staffing, we should be able to get cut off on all Just so that I'm clear, you, we perhaps are going to be cut up on staffing by Thanksgiving, but that doesn't mean that we should expect to see the quantity of, at that point. Of new books. Uh, I'm just wondering, are we talking about how many months are we talking about in which we have a relatively incomplete collection uh, of, of new books? I, I of mean, new books? that's kind of really hard to respond because I mean, it could, it could ramp up pretty quickly, but by the same token, it, it'll it'll take a little while. I think I, how quickly we used to turn out books, I think within 24 to 48 hours. So the one that's more than business day. We're not seeing that. Yeah. A business day later, it was on the shelf yeah. or on somebody in somebody's hands. Yeah, but without <laughs> full complement of staff in that department, it, it's it's just one person. She can't do that. And a lot of the books have been ordered, and they're sitting in boxes waiting yeah. for somebody to open the boxes. Have you had inquiries from from library users where it would make sense to, to put a notice up of some sort? Or nobody, well, nobody but me. The one thing I will mention is that. We're part of a network, so whatever we can provide immediately, people yeah. can request it from another library. So yeah. nobody, as far as I know from the public, has said anything to us okay. in terms of not being able to get their hands on certain material. Um, and even, even you know, especially with the hot new releases, like fiction and nonfiction, even with libraries having them, their whole list is huge. So, so I don't really anticipate an issue. We'll get up to speed as soon as we can, but I think we'll be we'll be okay. Okay, thanks. I just thought we should all be aware of the, the same information that Nietzsche shared with me earlier in the week. Right? Yes, thank you. Uh, old business, Katie, uh, the direct, director's search update. Yeah, great. Um, I've seen many of you in the last <laughs> few weeks. Um, so we are um, heading into our final round of interviews this week. Uh, we have whittled the pool down from 23 applicants to three finalists. Um, I won't be sharing details of, of them in this meeting. Um, they're not public. Um, but a few things of note, we did survey staff after your last meeting and discussion about wanting them to give us some feedback about the qualities that they were looking for and the questions they wanted us to ask. And we had really robust response from the staff. Oh, so thank you for that. It was an anonymous Google survey. Um, and I'll be sharing that a summary of that feedback loop back out with staff so that they could see generally what the themes were amongst themselves. Um, so in terms of next steps, um, we have, um, like I mentioned, third round this week. So if you have the previous schedule, we're basically a week uh, slower than we had anticipated, largely just logistics of scheduling lots of people's calendars. Um, but um, depending on the outcome of the final round, the next steps after the actual day where we're interviewing folks is that, um, you know, procedurally, I'll make a recommendation to the town manager on a candidate. Um, that candidate would be subject to your approval. So we'll have discussions coming out of the third round um, on people's feedback on that. Um, I'll also have to do reference checks. That's a really important pro part of any of our processes um, for hiring. Um, if we select a candidate and they're um, recommended to you all, the this board will have to take a formal vote in an open public meeting to make that decision. So um, I was just looking at the schedule. I think realistically, because we'll have to notice it 48 hours and all of that, I think realistically it would be the week of October 30th. Um, there is some flexibility depending on your schedules and preference, if that's all Zoom, if that's during the day, if you want to meet in person. So um, I, I defer to all of you and you don't have to decide that now, but there's a little bit more flexibility than kind of your normal 
meeting schedule. Um, and at that point, the final candidate's information would become public um, and you all would take a vote if you support the recommendation from the town manager. Um, and if there is support for that candidate, then um, I would take it from there in terms of coordinating, you know, when their first day and um, negotiating um, salary and benefits. And so the offer would be made to the candidate before we vote or it's what order? I'm just wondering what the order. Yeah, the order. Of the, when is the offer? If there's, I would want to get a sense from the candidate that they would be interested in being the recommended candidate to the board. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there would be a call from me, me to say, I would like to recommend you to the board. Your hiring would be subject to their approval. Or, you know, and at that point, your information, your candidacy would be made public. Are you, you know, are you in this, yeah. you know, are you? <laughs> so just to get, you know, um, kind of that affirmation. Um, yeah. But then after the vote, I think we'd really, um, Negotiate all the details. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, it would. Yeah. Okay, so I will make sure that we keep you in the loop. Yeah. Thank you. Sure, nothing else is. Yes, and I'll send a notice out to everyone. Thank you. Yep. That's this Friday. Yeah. Um, and Megan, just to know, I will send you the resumes of the final candidates. I was candidate. just going to ask, yes. I, ha I, am, I haven't been able to participate. Yeah. I'm completely in the dark as to who these finalists yeah. are. I will send them. Keep it. our names, anything like that. So that's yeah. good. Thank yeah. you. I was just going to ask if I could meet Jay or, or figure out. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Are we allowed to uh, talk about, not here, but are we allowed to see who the candidates are, the finalists? Um, or do we have to wait until we Yes, out? I can share. Um, I can email everyone who the final three are. Okay. Um, and I just ask that you not deliberate amongst yourselves. Um, just the three trustees that are in round three can deliberate um, right. after their interview panel. Right. Yeah, but I can certainly do that. Thank you. Yeah. If he decides to be in person to do this vote, I have uh, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, the 31st. And I move forward the first district. So I'm, I'm, you're in conflict territory for me because I'm out of town. Um, I'm on vacation. I suppose we can figure out how to, I can do it by Zoom, but I'm, I'm out of town from the 27th until the 6th, through the 6th. <laughs> And the 31st is a very busy night. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I would, I would hope not on the 31st. Are you talking about the 30th of October? Yeah. That's, uh, that's town meeting. That's what it is. Yeah. 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 I'm not 100% sure of my availability. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to be seen with a coconut sitting on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Will a uh, member of select board be joining the prestige usually when they're being interviews or uh, for appointments? There's usually a select board member that comes, but I don't know for this purpose if it's yeah, that's, for we have that's only for appointments. Appointments of trustees, yeah, yeah, but um, not for this. No, no. okay, right. never mind. I'm um, yeah, so no, 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 yeah. if, if this were just. You know, it, it, I'm picturing this not being an especially long meeting. If we did it over Zoom, go do it morning. I, I don't know what my schedule is. Subject to, right. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. And I will reach out as soon as, you know, we've got to get through this week. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, see, see if we have a recommended candidate, um, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. reference checks and all that. So yeah. um, I'll reach out and we can do a doodle or we can do something to okay. coordinate schedules. Okay. Thank you, Katie, for the update and, and honestly for your depth handling of this whole process. We very much appreciate it. Next on the agenda for old business, Rob, is there anything to say on the climate update? Just a brief update. So we had the third and final meeting of the Climate Action Planning Committee Advisory Group on September 20th. 
So this was a group of stakeholders um, around town, folks who were in various town departments and then folks who were on various boards, um, really to kind of get buy-in to this climate action plan that is being formulated, which is going to be something that is, you know, incredibly impactful to, uh, to a lot of things around town, both in terms of construction and planning and, and um, the ways that we're hoping to address the climate crisis. Um, in terms of the immediate sort of uh, things for the library, sort of links to the library, um, there was a request um, by the head of that committee to potentially have a public event here at the library to help educate folks more about what's going on with this climate action plan. Right. Um, so that's a nice way that we can help support that, assuming that it works out on timing. Great. Thank you. Perfect. Um, and that's really kind of the, the biggest thing right now, but it's just something to be mindful of um, over the next year, um, that any sort of tie-in that we can have, anything we can do as a library to support that and get the word out, um, you know, it would be great if we could, we could do that. Great. Thanks, Rob. Mm -hmm. uh, Anna, is there any update on, on the equity and resolutions on the agenda? Yeah, uh, briefly, just to um, uh, report that, uh, a little bit more about what you mentioned, the um, Harvest Fair was well attended, and the library was very well represented. Actually, Ellen Penn was there as well. They had a table. So um, there was a lot of interest. It's always, folks, uh, the library has a very high brand, as you know. So there's uh, always pleasant uh, comments about the library every time, uh, at least that's been my experience. So uh, it was great. I'm glad that the uh, staff could be there and the community was very, it was very good. Uh, we, there, there's one other event coming up, uh, NBI Summit, November 5th. So there may be an opportunity for the library to participate as well. There's there is um there's a informal request that's may come to your way soon uh, for um a similar book set up like the way that it was done for them with the cultural festival. So they people really were very uh, appreciative of that display. So that, that may be in the works, but uh, this is still a different thing. Thank you. Uh uh, the Neo Connect. Um, I am waiting until the the result, the directors. That's fine. Yes. So I'm not there's nothing happening as far. Probably starting next year. I will keep that. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Katie. Uh, yes. At the library, so right. Um, so we have a motion that I'm gonna make, and um, we can get a second. And then Gay Ellen, I think, is prepared to show you a few of the um artists, right? So, this is a motion for the um first six months of 2024. The art committee met um uh, last week, um, and went over um, a, a group of artists. Well, actually, I will say, recruited by Gay Ellen. <laughs> She's doing a good job. Um, and so um, here's still so here's the motion. This is a motion to approve the following lineup of art arts exhibits for the first six months of 2024 in the Friends of the Nina Free Public Library. The following artists have submitted their applications and were approved unanimously by the Arts and Exhibition Subcommittee. January, Devin D. Chiara, abstract canvas paintings, February. Tentative Connor Pl uh, Plunkett, Pen and Ink Cityscapes of Boston. Um, we are holding that, uh, making that tentative because we're still working toward possibly getting a an artist for Black History Month to display that month, in which case we would defer Connor till later in the year. Uh, March, um, Bob Edgelton, fantasy and sci-fi illustrator. Um, April, Needham Open Studios, which is largely Needham artists. Um, May, Needham High School Scholastic Art Awards. Um, June, Dan Callahan, Oil and Acrylic Landscapes. So that, that's the list. So um, I don't know if you want to. Oh, did you show them as I was? We've been watching. You've been watching. OK, um, they run rip through it all pretty fast. Okay. Well, he's a big he's a pain, he's a pain, he's a pain, he's a pain, he's a monster. He's a great Godzilla fan. 
So it's a nice, uh, different sort of art for us than, than we often see here. So it's, it makes it sort of fun and, and interesting that young people. Did, did you show Connor Plunkett? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And Debbie, okay. So you got pretty much everyone up there. Good. So we need a second for that. FK's motion. Earhart seconds your motion. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thanks very much. Okay. Yes. Let's see. Gave us a. Oh, is he 10 years old? 11. Oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> sweet. Uh, I was asking if I would go for, you know, permanent part time. He, he offered it to us, but according to our rules, he must accept the yeah. invitation. Uh, it's either going to be behind the reference desk or in the reference office because I don't want to try finding a spot publicly out of work because there is one. Is that right? Yeah, we sort of found a wall space <laughs> where we can put our involvement. The finding your reference would look lovely. Yeah, I think so. It's an yeah, it's visible. Okay. That, um, but does he need it especially for before he So a motion to accept Earhart. Make a motion. Anna, motion to second Earhart. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Fantastic. Aye, and thank you. We'll have to express our thanks. <laughs> and just to mention, the current artist right now is Tom Duran, who's worth taking a look at abstract art, which is nice to have uh, now and then. So um, he's got beautiful, colorful abstract art. We'll be doing a meeting this Saturday at 2 o'clock. Oh, nice. Uh, thank you. I don't know if, if, if a notice about that is shared with all the trustees, but... Um, the 2 p.m. Meet, meet and greet? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's up on the well, website. Okay, it's on yeah, the website. The usual okay. event um, calendar. Thank you. Um, Rob, anything to report about the McIver series? Not much right now. I've reached out to two different folks. Um, you know, we do have limited additional availability. So if you do have any other ideas, always feel free to reach out. Um, but hoping to have some dates nailed down by the next meeting. Okay, great. Um, I'll offer a brief update about the friends of, of the library. They had a successful book sale uh, this past this is past weekend or the weekend before. Recently, they just had, I think two weeks ago, a successful book sale. Uh, and they have two upcoming events that are worth mentioning be between now and our next meeting. Uh, on Sunday, October 29th, uh, the art historian Paul Fisher is going to be making a presentation about John Singer Sargent, uh, who's the subject of, a, of an exhibit at the Museum of Fine Arts. So uh, uh, the good news is, is that sounds like a wonderful event. The bad news is it's, if you don't already have a reservation, it's sold out uh, from what I'm told. Uh, but maybe people... You know, sometimes don't show, and if you're interested in going, you know, there's a good chance you might get in. Uh, on Sunday, November 12th, uh, the good folks who started up that Needham Observer, uh, that sort of uh, news organization, Peter O'Neill and Gene Hopkins, my friend Gene Hopkins, Frederica Saylor Lalonde, are going to be talking about their efforts uh, for the Needham Observer. Uh, so that's Sunday, November 12th, and that also looks very interesting. Okay. Also, the Needham Observer attended our subcommittee meeting, and you know they have been a reporter. Now, um, they we haven't seen anything yet as a result, of it, but it was a little surprise, a bit of surprise, a welcome surprise. But you know, good. Um, nice to have them. Um, where is the uh, November twelfth? They're all here. Okay, They're in the community room. So do you know the time? Two to two to three thirty Sunday, November twelfth. Uh, uh, Library Foundation, nobody here to, to speak to them. Kay, you have something to say so, for them? Yes. So I, uh, Beth Hammerstam, the new president, um, we should probably change on the, the uh, agenda is still showing Joan. Uh, its name, but so it's going forward. It's going to be Beth. Okay, can you spell yeah. her name for me? Uh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, -E and hammer stand H A M M E R S T A N D. Okay, she's the new president. She's out of town tonight, but um, 
she I attended their last meeting and uh, es essentially they're they're talking about um, how that they're in the process of launching their annual mailing, which is their primary source of um, fundraising. Um, and they also had a table at the Harvest Fair, uh, which was well attended. They popped by there and they had a big chart of people putting their favorite books and um, it was fun. And also, uh, let's see. Okay, so the rest of the meeting was largely, you know, discussion on kind of brainstorming on fundraising ideas and procedures. So, report. Okay, thank you. Uh, Gay Ellen, I wasn't sure. I know when, when, when a friend's group was here, you gave them an update as far as technology advancement in this room. Is that okay? Yes. Some of the money that was raised from the Doris Kearns Goodwood event was used to, 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 to improve some of the stuff yeah. here. We have a brand new microphone, two handheld and two uh, headset microphones. Um, we also have the sound system completely valid. So the sound now comes down from the ceiling. So there will be no issues for the doctors. If you are ready to Thank you. That's that's great yeah, news. So, yeah. great. Um, and any final comments or questions? Fantastic. Uh, this could be a, a record setting yeah. uh, uh, meeting. Um, uh, anyone have a motion to adjourn? It's, it's too soon. <laughs> We're in shock. We don't want to. <laughs> so, 754. It's a record. Rob, so move. You want to, I can send it into Very eight. good. Megan seconds. <laughs> All in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? We are adjourned. Thank yeah, you very much. And maybe good. Good.